Hey y'all, I'm Steve, Hobo with Wood, and this is going to be the second video in a series on engraving mirrors. This is a lot of work. It's not as easy as you would think. This is a true art form, and in this video, we're going to go over what I've done for the last two days. I've got behind me over 24 hours of laser time on mirrors testing and show you the procedures and the priorities that you need to take and make if you're going to try and produce the best image possible using your diode laser. So hang around, but only if you really want to learn. So if you purchased this pack of mirrors on Amazon, then we're all working with the same material. And that is crucial if you're going to use these settings that I'm going to discuss in this video. Because as I demonstrate later on, it's going to make a difference. So I started out with 50 mirrors. I'm down to 16. With each engraving that I've been doing, uh, t testing time averaging anywhere from 30 to 40 minutes per mirror, you do the math. I've, I've been sitting here f for a long time doing these tests, but I've learned a lot and I, and I actually uh, had an extremely surprising outcome. It's not what I expected. Uh, I was I was shocked at what I learned using these mirrors on my Roly Lasermatic 10 as to what produced the best possible image. Now, <clears throat> this whole stack right here, which is these are nothing but test and test images and test uh, material tests, trying to find uh, the best possible power settings. But it's not just about power. Power, speed. Now I'm using grayscale. So I'm using a max power and a min power. So I'm looking for that right uh, range of power. But I'm also looking for the right focus point. The right speed. There are so many different variations. And I'm going to show you examples of several of them here in just a minute. But... After the first video post, many of you made comments about, well, can't you go faster? Can't you go faster? It seems like it's very low, low speeds. So I ended up doing a test pattern like this, and that's going to have, uh, I think it was, let's see if I can read this. It was anywhere from 10% uh, 10, 10 power, Let's put it in the right direction. There we go. 10% power up to 100% power here. And 600 millimeters a minute up to 18,000 millimeters a minute. And I think that is the full spectrum of the Lasermatic 10's capabilities. And so what I was wondering was, okay, if I found a power range that worked and, and produced a good image down here on this lower speed settings, could I not find the same variation in output as I slide up the scale, the, this gradient here? So over here, these six look like about these six, but it's done at a whole lot higher speed. Makes sense, right? It should work. Well, it didn't. It did not have the same results. I was shocked, aggravated, and surprised, and a whole bunch of other adjectives. Uh, so I spent lots of time trying to find a better power, better uh, speeds, and I have come to what I will show you here, what I feel like was the best possible result using these mirrors and again, I stress these mirrors because I'll show you here. They 
will have their own issues. They will going and and the process that that this mirroring is done with is going to affect your outcome. And not all mirrors are processed or created the same way. And I'm going to try and hold this here where you can see the back of these. If you have not purchased any of them, that white material on the back of that mirror, it has hips and valleys. It has highs and lows on it. Now that, uh, to me, looks like that may have been a, a surface that was possibly rolled on instead of dipped into a bath because if it was in a liquid bath and submerged and pulled out here you know, then it should have a nice slick finish on it these do not and those hips and valleys and the unevenness of that backing material is going to play a factor in the outcome and possibly why the higher speeds weren't working as well so with all that said, let's go over here and take a look at some of the outputs, some of the creations. Okay, so here is just some of the test pieces. And I'm right now we're looking at the backs of the mirrors. And I have on written on the back all of the different settings that I used. And some of this is not going to make any sense to you, but it worked. It, it's how just how I made a quick notes. The 12.5 is 12,500 millimeters a minute. Highest possible setting was 80, and lowest setting was 60. Minimum and maximum 80. 80 max, 60 minimum. Same settings, 12.5, 80, and 60. So if that's the same as that, why do these look so different? This doesn't have nearly this amount of burn as this one does now i'll point out one thing here notice this white streak that goes through the middle there well that's not because of the settings or goof in the mirror or the laser but that was a uh, and i'm running at a 22 degree scan angle but if you look close enough you can see horizontal lines that run up through that image and those horizontal lines you see there those are the hips and valleys in that material and that 22 degree scan angle right there or that white uh, ridge there that runs across there that's at 22 degrees well the laser didn't stop outputting there that was just a line of of thick material maybe I don't actually know that doesn't make sense either because the line of thick material wouldn't be at uh, 22 degrees. That would possibly be a straight vertical line there. But I, I, there, there's an anomaly. That may have been something funky with the laser because it's scanning at 22 degrees. And so the one thing that's constant in that line is that 22 degree scan angle. Not the roll, because the rolling ridge is rolled this way. So I just rethought what I thought might have happened. That may have been an anomaly with the output from the laser there. I don't know. Don't know what caused that. But the difference between the amount of material being removed, here you can see all the way through to the orange uh, laser on the hand and beside the hat, here it's not as prominent. You don't see as much orange as you do here. The difference is the focus point. This one was focused at uh, about the width of um, the one mirror above the optimum focal point. And this one was one mirror, one step down on the step gauge. So the only thing I changed was the focal point between these two mirrors and had completely different outcomes. So focal point is extremely important. Here... I worked with 12,500 millimeters a minute, 76 max, 38 min, 12.5 again, same, but I lowered the speed a little to 67 and 30 versus 76 and 38 and got different outcomes. And again, we're looking at the backs of the mirrors. 
the negative. 12.5 and 90% power max and 55 min. These were all ranges that I thought might produce good images uh, based on the test scale. Where is that test scale here? So here, if we look at 12, five and 90 and 55, if I come up here, there's 12, five. And I'm gonna try and mark that. That's gonna be here and 55. So that was gonna be somewhere from about here over to about here. And that should have given me what I thought would have been a promising image, but it didn't. And here we were at, uh, let's see, 4,800. I lowered my speed quite a bit, 4,800 millimeters a minute. And with a 70 max power and 10 min power. And it was defocused two and a half millimeters, 500 lines per inch. Now I haven't even talked about the lines per inch uh, yet, but I'm gonna show you up here. I did another test. So here I'm testing all these different speeds and powers, and then I would find a different, trying to find uh, a good focus point. And let's see, uh, so many tests, it's hard to show you what I wanna show you. Uh, 450. 450 all right so these these two this one's at 6,000 millimeters a second or a minute rather this is 7,000 millimeters a minute max 70 max 70 min 10 min 10 so these two same power settings but one's at 6,000 and one's at 7,000 And that one was looking kind of promising. And that was at 450 LPI instead of 500 LPI. So I thought, well, maybe I can make this happen. Here's a couple that I did. 2100, both of them. Speed variations of 28 max, 10 min, 35, and 15. Same 500 DPIs and 22 degree scan angle. Now, these two, the only difference is a slight variation in power, and these mirrors will stick to the top of that leg sand like a suction cup. All right, so this one, slightly lower power, 2100, 28 and 10. And there you go. 2100, 28 and 10. And the detail on the hat, you can see the, the eye really well. It looks pretty good. But if you notice, you can see, let's get over here, see those vertical lines? That is in the material. That's those hips and valleys, those ridges on the mirror. And over here, this was stuck to the lid again. Twenty-one, thirty-five, and fifteen. So this was higher power, same speed, higher power. You would think it would have. Uh, oh, the, and the difference though. The major difference between these, and it's something I haven't talked to you about yet, this is higher power, so you'd expect more, more burnt off of it, but this has more burnt off of it, and why? The major difference between these is not that um, slight variation in power. This is a difference in the contrast settings in the photograph. This is the original photograph. I did not adjust the contrast uh, and, and play with the settings in the photo. And see the difference, the hat, you can't really see the detail in the top of the hat in this one. 
and this one you do. And that's that was accomplished by playing with the contrast. I'm going to show you all this in light burn in a second. And now I'm going to show you uh, we these we're talking about playing with different speeds and different variations and power settings, focal points. These are showing you a difference in the contrast. Now I'm going to show you the difference between lines per inch or dots per inch. So I'm going to stack all these up and get these out of the way here. This was a lot of work. This was more than I anticipated. But with all the questions that were arising after the first video, I said, well, I need to do a little bit more in-depth, a, a, a bigger dive. I already knew what I had worked and worked well, but with all the questions that were arising, I said, well, let's see if I can find a better alternative. So that's what prompted all of this. All right, so now these three. Let's bring these to the front and... All right, so these three, these were done at 2100 millimeters per minute, 45 max power, 15 min, 21, and that, believe it or not, is a 5, uh, 15 and 10, actually no, I lowered that to 40, 21, 40, and 15, 21, 40, and 15. So this one was done at a little bit higher power. But the biggest difference in this one, these are all three done at zero degree scan angle instead of 22 degree. Everything else we looked at was at 22 degree scan angle. These are at zero degree scan angle on all three. But this one's 500 DPI, 375, 254. At 254, this one took 28 minutes. 375, this one took 42 minutes. And these are only four inch mirrors. This one at 500 DPI, 56 minutes. Now, let's reveal the outcome at 254 DPI, zero degree scan angle. And I remember, zero degree scan angle you can see those hips and valleys, those those lines that run across there are a result of the hips and valleys on the backing material of that mirror. Now, only difference here to speak of, now this one was done at a higher power, slightly, 45 instead of 40. So you would think since I lowered the power on these, they're going to have even less burn off of it. But this... 250 DPI or 254 DPI 375 DPI so from 250 to 375 we're already start, starting to see a better clarity 254 250 375 this was actually even at a lower power but because that increased DPI you're starting to see less of those hips and valleys because it's starting to overlap itself a little bit and getting more and more burns on that those hips and valleys, those ridges. Starting to see some better clarification. Now from 375, we go to 500. Now, there, you don't see hardly any of the hips and valleys. The image looks pretty good compared to the original 250 or 254. That was 0.1 uh, on the spot size. So it's 254, 375, 500. Now, why is this not any uh, darker? Why can we not see the image that well? Because this is without playing with the contrast on the image. This was done as the image was provided. So the image doesn't have a lot of contrast to it. It's a very gray image. The detail is there, but it's a very gray image 
so you don't see a lot of contrast in the image itself. So let's jump back over here to the computer. Okay, so this is truly an art form and it takes a lot of practice, trial and error, but hopefully with what I'm sharing with you in these series of videos, you're not gonna have to spend days testing to dial this in for you. And if you're working with the same mirrors and a 10 watt diode laser, you should be able to use the settings that I'm providing to replicate the, a very similar outcome as long as you've edited the, the photograph correctly. So let's jump into Lightburn and look at the steps that you need to take to get to your optimum output. All right, first, I mentioned to you in the previous video on tools, not tools, laser tools, this is where you find your material test right here. And on the Rolly Lasermatic 10, I'm pretty sure that this is your default minimum maximum speeds, 600 millimeters a minute and 18,000 millimeters a minute max. And then over here, 10 and 100%. Now on these mirrors, it was my experience on the 10 watt diode, 10% power did not do anything. So you pretty much know that power scale, that 10% is just is going to be zero no matter what speed you're running at. But if you run this, it's going to give you an output, you know, like so. I ended up doing, uh, let's see, um, a count of, to get a full spectrum, I did a count of 20 and 20 in preview. So I ran that power scale, that test material to get a true gradient across that entire mirror to, to see if this uh, output right here at 1500 at, from 25% power to 50% power, 25 to 50, that, that gradient, the amount of material removed here looked like it was very similar to something up here at a higher speed and higher power but it did not produce the same effect on the mirror. This worked better at the lower speeds. And I'll show you that uh, 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 finished complete mirror here in a minute and those exact settings in which that I worked. But this is how I found that perfect pocket of gradient and the different speeds to test. Once you've done that and you found your your power scale that you're going to use for your optimum output you then need to work with your uh your and and also have big tip big 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 whenever you run that um material test you want to do that from the focal point that you plan to do your image so <clears throat> If you're using the rolling lasermatic 10, you have a step gauge like so. This top surface is what's optimum for engraving on the material, on the surface material, so if you were cutting on wood, uh, working with wood. This step down is, you know, a little for cutting uh, thinner material. Next step down is cutting thicker material. So as you lower the focal point with your laser, it's moving that that optimum point uh, pinpoint of the laser deeper into the material that's why you're you would lower it if you're going to cut through thicker material well since we aren't cutting on mirrors and when i do images and i showed this on the last video i, I just for demonstration purposes I, you know i said i would i use pre-focus and pre-focus is the laser the optimum laser point is pre-focused it's above the optimum focal point so if this is the optimum focal point for engraving on the surface then pre-focusing the laser is raising that and i just used this surface down here to show if i jumped up a level that's pre-focused that was not to mean not to mean that this was the optimum point so in order to pre-focus a laser above this and do it from a fixed position I would take and lay my my mirror that I'm laying 
that I'm going to engrave, it went flat on the laser bed. And then if you notice there, it says one mirror and one step down. But the, these were just my notes. But one mirror meant I had my mirror laid on there. This is what I'm going to engrave. Then I took a second mirror, laid that on top of it, and then laid my focal gauge down there and focused here. Now this was one mirror and a step down. So I focused that particular mirror one step down there. That's how I tried that. But I would start with two mirrors stacked up. So it's a mirror, an excessive, one excessive mirror and focus to here. Then I remove these two. And now when I go to engrave on this mirror, it is pre-focused the distance, the thickness of one mirror. You follow? So when you do your material test, make sure you have it at the pre-focus or the sub-focus, as I call it, if and that's what these here are, the, the, the steps and the, the gauge. If this is optimum focal point up top, and this drops down, I call that sub-focus. That sub-focus, that sub-focus, you know, and, and steps. It's below, sub, below the focal point. He needs a new muffler. So sub-focus as I drop down, pre-focus as I come up. So it's before the focus, Focus, subfocus. All right. So when you do your material test, have that focal point set. Then run your material test. Otherwise, your your results are not going to be any good. Whenever you start changing your focal point, when you're actually doing the mirrors. Now, image. I'm gonna bring in the original image and. You can see this is very gray. There's not a lot of detail. Uh, it's a it's very high resolution, so you can see. But as far as the the the, the spectrum, the grayscale, there's not a lot of variance there. It's just very gray, very monotone. And that is what produced the really good result of this image but very, very gray. Not a lot of detail there. So how do we fix that? So before you do your job, you need to play with the contrast. So if we take this image and we right click on the image, come down here to adjust, where is it at? Let's see, right click, there we go. No, I won't select it, right click. Adjust image. It was, but I don't know why I didn't see it a minute ago. I'm just blind. So select it, right click, adjust image right here. Now, when you adjust image, <clears throat> in fact, I've got my another thing we're going to talk about. Let's turn this off for right now. Adjust image. There you go. So that's what you're going to see if you haven't changed any of your negative settings. When you adjust image, these two are pretty much identical. This is showing you what your output would be. They are reversed. Invert display. There's your negative image. But in order to, you, you, you see the grayscale is there. Here you want to start playing with your contrast. You want to bring in some uh, some differentiation there. Change your contrast. And you don't want it too bright. Increase your gamma. And what I'm looking for, you see see the buckle up here on the belt? Or not the belt, but the hat. It's not really a buckle. It's just a trim piece. It's kind of all grayed out. Here I'm starting to get some contrast and I'm looking here at the eyeball. And you can roll in your and zoom in to a fixed point using your scroll button on your mouse and start really looking at the detail. And you want to get what you feel like is going to produce the best possible outcome. Because if you go too bright, that's not going to work. You do need to have some dark contrast to it. And this is where I said the art 
the artwork, the you know, trial and error takes takes over. But there you can see the pupil. Here you don't see the pupil at all. There you can begin to see the outlines of the pupil there. So that's a much, much better contrast in that image. And say, okay. And also, I increased my DPI on this image to 500, and I'm working in grayscale. Okay. Now, if we go to that uh, layer, when you're working on a mirror, you want to have your image output a negative image. So you're going to want to turn that on. Say OK. And if you go back in here and look at that again on the adjust image, now it shows you the negative image. That's what your laser is going to output. You can then click here to invert the display and it'll show you what the face of it, what it should look like from the front. So when you decide to turn on that option in your cuts and layers, doesn't matter if you turn on your negative image first and then you go to adjust image and you want to see a better, you can just invert that display and it's going to show you that again. So it's easy. It doesn't matter which way you do it, just make sure you turn that on in your cuts and layers or your output is not going to work right. You're going, to, you're going to get a negative image instead of the picture, the photograph. So there's a lot of information you got to keep up with here. You need to make sure you have it focused right. You've searched for your optimum power range. Working in grayscale, a maximum power and a minimum power. Now you've adjusted your, your focal points, your power, and now you've adjusted your contrast to get your best possible result. And now you're ready to send that to the laser. All right, so this is video two in a series. I'm probably going to do <clears throat> a third one here, which will be kind of a summary, a real quick walkthrough with an image set up, burn it, final results, and hopefully that'll be edited down and be a really short video. But this is a lot of information, <clears throat> and there's a lot. You almost you're not going to be doing a ton of these. So you almost need to write you up a checklist of things you need to do when you're trying to do photographs on a mirror. Now, an image, uh, just an, uh, a, a regular SVG that's not needing to be uh, in grayscale or having contrast, if you're just doing text, <coughs> excuse me, text on the back of a mirror is really easy, really simple. Which, when you're trying to get all of those gradients and all that grayscale in a photograph, that's where this really comes trial and error. And, and hopefully you'll learn enough from these series of videos that you won't have as hard of a time as I've had over the last week dialing these things in for you. And again, these results are on these mirrors. I don't expect the exact same outcome out of a different set of mirrors because these are they have their own problems with the way that that backing's on there. <clears throat> but this image is one of the best images I was able to produce after several days of testing, two days of testing to get this image. And it actually turned out really, really nice. I'm happy with that on this mirror. Hopefully it shows up well on the camera. That's always hard to try and show uh, <laughs> in, in images on mirrors. But let's look at um, Lightburn, and I'll show you the settings for this particular image and how we got to that outcome. So in the Lightburn. All right, so I am working image mode grayscale. We are outputting a negative image. Line interval is uh, 0.0508 or 500 dpi. You can just put in 500 dpi. I'm using a scan angle of 22 degrees. I went over the scan angles and why that's important in the first video. If you haven't seen it, go back and watch it. I'm running at a speed of 2100 millimeters a minute, 
with a max power of 35% and a min power of 15% on my 10 watt Rolly Lasermatic 10. 2100 millimeters a minute, 35 max, 15 min, negative image, 500 DPI, 22 degree scan angle. Focal point. Now here is the surprising outcome to produce this image. In order to get this image, it was completely counter to everything I've ever learned or done using making or engraving images. In order to create that image, I did not pre-focus the laser. I did not set my focal point up here above the focus gauge. In order to create that image using the Lasermatic Roly 10 focal gauge, I actually sub-focused it. I actually came down here on the first tier down, which that says it's set for uh, cutting uh, three millimeter wood or eighth inch material. So what is that? Let's take a look at what that subfocus is. If that's zero, we're going to zero that out. So zero and come here. That is a subfocus of one millimeter. <clears throat> that is counterintuitive to everything I have ever done with images. I was not expecting that outcome by using 500 DPI and then sub-focusing that laser, I was expecting to, to start seeing some of the lines in the 22 degree scan angle. But I didn't. I did not. That was the best outcome. Sub-focus. Drop the focal point one millimeter below the optimum focal point for your 10 watt laser running at a 22 degree scan angle, 500 DPI, 2100 millimeters per minute, 35% max power and 15% min power. That was after two days of nonstop testing, the best outcome I got on these mirrors. I've got additional mirrors. In fact, on the next video, the third one in this series, I'm gonna introduce a new mirror with a different type of backing to see how well those exact same settings worked on a different mirror. So you're gonna to wanna to hang around for that third video in this series of laser engraving mirrors. So until then, well actually, you know what, before I go, if you're not a Patreon and you have been on the fence or it's just not even in the budget of signing up for a Patreon, I can't be a Patreon for anyone right now, I can't afford it. But one thing you can do to support me without spending a single extra dime. If you go to this link, anytime you need to shop on Amazon, I don't care what you're buying. No matter what you're buying. If you're jumping on Amazon to buy your uh, pet supplies, use this link to go to Amazon first. And all it is is it's just a redirect. It will send you to the same landing page as if you went to Amazon.com. The prices are identical. If you go to Amazon.com and look up your milk bone dog biscuits that you buy on a regular basis, and then you go to HoboWithWood.com slash Amazon and look up those same milk bone dog biscuits, they're going to be the exact same price. But what's the difference? When you go to HoboWithWood.com slash Amazon and make any and all of your Amazon purchases, I will get a small commission. And you can support this channel without spending a dime. If you already are a Patreon, or if you're regularly contributing to the Super Thanks, which I think's right there. It's either right there or right there. I'm not sure where it's at. And you want to help me even more? Put up there in your menu on your menu tab a favorites just you know create a favorites hobowithwood.com slash amazon and anytime you need to go to amazon to purchase just click on your favorites tab there and it's going to take you right to amazon and you're going to help me every time you shop
that would be greatly appreciated. If you do want to be a Patreon, here it is. Patreon.com slash Hobo with Wood. And always, if you don't feel like a regular monthly investment is in your wheelhouse or it's not in your financial capability right now, as I said, it's not in mine, but if you find these videos particularly helpful, hit that super thanks wherever it's at. Buy me a biscuit. I'd greatly appreciate it. So now, until then, I'm out. I'll see you in the third video, and hopefully the last in the series of mirror engraving. See you soon.